Hi guys, welcome back to Resource Management 2021. Yes, this video is all about the trap, AKA 40 characters that slow your progression. Yes, the investment in one of these 40 characters can hurt your progress in this game. So if you're ready for it, sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Resource management is all about how efficient a character is for clearing content in this game. So resource management is my rating system of how useful a character is unlocking content and sustainable resources. Content that provides sustainable resources is one, or can they be used to unlock a legendary? Are they used for monthly events? Are they the best option for the highest tier challenge? Are they efficient for dark dimension? Can they be used in the highest tier of U7? and the number of campaigns they can be used in, and last but not least, Arena. And once again, resource management is not based on a character's farmability or how attainable they are by free to play. As almost every character in this game, I say almost, you can unlock or get out of orbs before they're actually attainable in a store or in a node. So before we jump into this list, what is the trap? The trap is investment in characters for competitive game modes that the meta will constantly change. These game modes are like arena and war. A lot of characters when they have no use and the developers know they have no use in other game modes, what do they do? They slap the war tag on them. End game players with the only content they need to focus on to keep staying competitive is war. It's great for them to get it. If you are a newer mid game player still struggling through content, I can tell you right now, you will hurt your progression if you just focus on war. I covered more of this in the prologue. If you guys have not seen the prologue, there'll be an eye in the corner screen to go check that out. But what causes the meta to constantly change? These are when they release characters that are direct counters to characters that are already in the meta. And power creep. Every set of characters come out, it slowly moves the bar up of how strong characters are. Over time, without a rework, characters become useless and if you don't believe me find a launch player and have them talk about yondu or hand i'm pretty sure they can tell you how meta those characters were at the launch of the game but with that said we got to move quickly because it will take forever to get through 40 characters so the characters ranking 38 through 40 with a score of 35 yes 35 you do not want a low score in this metric is the Ravenger team of Boomer, Stitcher, and Bruiser. Once again, to save time, I'm not gonna to elaborate too much. Just basically, they get the majority of their score because they can unlock Star-Lord. Let's keep going. Now, we have a lot of characters that tie for the score of 30. So the following set of characters are ranks 19 through 37. We do have a couple different slides to go through. So first, let's kick this off with AIM. Yes, Monstrosity, Assaulter, Security, Infector, and Researcher. All not very effective characters to build up in this game. As a matter of fact, a few months ago before the launch of ISO, I would have told you guys to go after AIM to get Hela in the Villains campaign. I no longer tell any player to go after AIM. Go after Sinister Six, slap ISOs on Sinister Six, especially Healer, because that was their biggest downfall to get you to Hela. But with ISOs now, Sinister Six, you're gonna build for a legendary, you're gonna go for Hela. They're gonna do the first three nodes of that Villains Chapter 7 campaign. You are set, skip aim, no longer needed. And while we're still on the subject of aim, Graviton is also a very skippable character. Now, Scientist Supreme is not on this list. She does have many other uses other than what the rest of aim can be used for. So she is saved from being on the bottom 40, but the next character I need to introduce could also be very useful in this game if the rumors are true, and that is Wasp. Yes, Pimtech. If they are needed for a legendary, her value is gonna go up along with the rest of the Pimtech characters. So for right now, take that with a grain of salt. Moving on. The next set of characters are all part of the same faction and that is Hydra. Wish that was a little faster. Keep moving on. And that is the minion, sniper, scientist, grenier, rifle trooper, armor guard. Yes, another team, great in war, not very useful outside of it. But wait, there are more Hydra characters we need to talk about. And that is Winter Soldier, Red Skull, and Crossbones, also with that score of 30. Now it's time for some shocking characters down this low. Yes, this hurt me a little bit putting this character down here, but that is Squirrel Girl, a character I personally myself have built up. Now, in all fairness, I did use her to unlock content, so not a complete waste. As I used her in place of 
anti-venom for the gold rush challenge before anti-venom was unlocked so it wasn't complete waste for me but honestly anti-venom is only a few months from being farmable be a waste of time if you guys want after her now now the next one you also need to take with a grain of salt which is a common thing you guys are going to see here is long shot and shatterstar yes new characters get taken at face value what they're useful for which in this case is mainly campaigns can they be used in the highest tier of the challenges for these two i don't think so because they i don't find a challenge where they can be paired together but you never know what combos people find and that's the main reason why new characters i recommend newer and mid game players don't build right out of the gate wait for the late game and the whale content creators to build them to make use of them and then see where they fall in the meta but remember as a new mid game player you are chasing content not what the newest meta and war is and another thing i need to reassure you guys every piece of content in this game is currently beatable by characters that are already here just so you guys know you don't need to go fishing for something to beat something that's already beatable but with that said it's time to drop the ball on a character i know many of you guys are going to be upset that's on this list and nico you are a filthy casual because that is captain marvel in case you guys don't know who nico is in my lines leader he's a big fanboy of captain marvel along with another female that I won't mention in case she falls on this list. But yeah, Captain Marvel really falling off, but she is a very good war meta character on her own right at a very high red star level and very well built up. She is a beast to take down in war just as a single character. Not even part of it, doesn't matter what team she's on, just her alone. But that will wrap up number 19 through 37. So let's keep going on here. And number 18 stands alone at a score of 25 points. And that is Stature. Yes, once again, another Pimp Tech character that could find a lot of value if she is needed for a legendary or I should say her value will go up. Now, I don't want to get into speculation about Jubilee being meta and all that stuff. That will unfold in time. So for right now, Grain of Salt, number 18. Next up is number six through 17. So quite a few tunes we need to get through here, all with a score of 20. First, let's start with something you're not gonna be disappointed with, and that is Hand Archer and Hand Blade Master. Right, not very disappointing. Let's keep going on here. Now showing up is Soldier, Sniper, and Ride Guard. Yes, the Mercenary Squad. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Where's Lieutenant? But Lieutenant doesn't have a score of 20 because Lieutenant has actually been used to one-shot City Nodes and Dark Dimension, giving him a little bit of a higher score than the other three. But while we're on the Merc category, can we add in Bullseye as another character ranked with 20 points. Now, before I show the next two, there is something I do want to point out, guys. When I did the exact same video almost six months ago, it amazed me. I want to say amazed me that the characters I said had no use in this game, how they magically got a use in Doom War. So I'm just going to say something, developers. If you need to know who's not useful in this game, because you need to make content to make them useful so people build them. I'm looking for a job where I can work at home with. So, you know, you can start paying me for this information. Going on here. That is Red Guardian and Yelena Belova, both a score of 20. Once again, newer characters. These two got the war tag slapped on them. So it's not looking good for their future viability and unlocking content in this game. But with that said, it doesn't look like we're done getting to the number six character yet. And this faction is going to have some jaws dropping on the floor. But before I show you guys who they are, let's first show you Night Nurse. Nobody's disappointed, right? It isn't disappointing, buddy. But wait, here we go. Some of you are not going to be surprised by this. Some of you are going to be shocked. And yes, it has come to the point for the first time ever, I have to say this faction is now useless. Defenders, Luke Cage, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, all with a score of 20. And in case you guys are wondering why Iron Fist isn't on this list, apparently Hero Mystics is needed in other campaigns, giving him a greater score to not get him on this list today. But yeah, going forward, I am going to have to recommend players avoid getting Defenders until they are made more useful in the meta. Skippable characters at this point, some of you are going to be cheering you like I've said it all along, but as of today, guys, it is official skippable characters. Moving on. Now we're on to the top five. Well, we're going to get two through five in this slide. So first off, these characters score 10, which basically means they're probably only useful in one campaign section, just one. And first, let's start with Nebula. Nobody really disappointed, not going to build Nebula. The next character that has that nice little war tag slapped on him, 
Namor. Now the next character, I do expect his stock to go up unless it turns out he is a big bust and that is Yellow Jacket. But as of today, his score is 10 until people start using him in Dark Dimension to one shot and until Pimtech is actually officially needed for a legendary, that's where he is. And the last one, I just wanna say devs, what were you thinking releasing this character is She-Hulk. Once again, another character they knew wasn't gonna be useful anywhere, slap the war tag on him. All right guys, and it is time for number one. Yes, a character actually has a score of zero. Absolutely useless. Now this character before I show him to you, another content creator recently, recently, said this was a surprisingly useful character, but he wasn't wrong about it being useful, but he is useless in getting content unlocked in this game. Please don't build up this character, and that is Kingpin. Absolutely useless. No special campaigns he's used for, not useful in any challenges. He's pretty much a plug and play character, but he is being massively power creeped at this point. And do I need to say it anymore? I don't think so. Guys, that's where I'm gonna end this one. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here and have not done so already, hit that subscribe button. And if you do not wanna miss the next part in resource management, as we're getting closer and closer to where I'm gonna break things down in detail, don't forget that notification bell. And with all that said, I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Let's start this with the character that actually has no campaign uses. And this character, if you guys were paying attention during the last video in this series, you guys already know who this should be. And that is 